Hello everyone. Today I'm excited to introduce Amazon Verified Permissions, a new service that simplifies your authorization strategy through centralized policy storage and by decoupling authorization as code. My name is Jeremy Ware and I'm a Security Specialist Solutions Architect at AWS. Fine-grained authorization models are often implemented in code today. This presents a number of challenges. One, developers are required to understand the permissions. Two, changing the rules means changing the code and rebuilding the application or the app. And three, audits are challenging and at risk for accurate audit findings. You can use verified permissions as an authorization as a service tool. Instead of building your own app-specific authorization mechanism, you can add granular permissions into your application with verified permissions. Using the console or AWS CLI, you can create policy stores, manage app policies, and test those policies independent of any app deployment. Your app will implement a call to the Is Authorized API, and this responds with a simple allow or deny decision from verified permissions as the policy evaluation point. In addition, your app may make calls to modify a user's permissions on their behalf. There are several benefits to verified permissions for both developers and security and operations teams. For developers, extracting authorization logic from functional source code and reusing authorization logic from a centralized policy store for similar applications really frees developers to focus their attention on feature development and improving time to market. Authorization as a service architectures lend themselves to modern, agile application development with microservices. And for security and operational teams, Teams are increasingly moving away from having numerous administration consoles. A centralized console aligns with centralized administration and governance. We're trying to simplify compliance audits and centrally log access requests as well with Amazon verified permissions. Once permissions have been externalized from application code, you can also test and iterate on least privilege without changing source code. This is a big win for both security operations teams and developers alike. In a nutshell, what is verified permissions? Well, it's a policy administration point and a policy decision point. As a policy administration point, administrators can create policy stores, create and update policy schemas, and centrally manage application policies. As a policy decision point, a client application can call Amazon Verified Permissions to get a decision on whether a principal is permitted to take an action on a resource given a set of context. Let's take a closer look at how policies are created. We create policies in a new open source language called Cedar. The language enables fine-grained policy-based access decisions. The language is structured to be both human readable and provide low latency access decisions based on the current attribute values of principles and resources. In the screenshot, we're able to see an example policy structure co which combines both role-based access control and attribute-based access control in order to provide fine-grained permissions. Now let's take a look at how this works in practice by managing policies in a policy store with verified permissions to manage authorization decisions for an AWS sample application. If you would like to test and demo this process and application yourself, you can find it linked on the final slide of this presentation. Verified permissions can be deployed with any identity provider. Deploying the application, in this case, automatically created an Amazon Cognito user pool to manage and authenticate our users. So before we can log into the app, we'll need to review the identity provider. As we go into the user pool created by Cognito, we're gonna be able to see our three users identified. In this case, Abby, Bob, and Eve. Our users would normally be able to log in and execute certain functions or actions within our application. But as you can see, none of our users have been provided any roles, which means they haven't inherited any entitlements to take action in our application. We wanna make sure that our users can now log into the application and take certain actions. So we're going to create a customer group. Once we've created this group in Cognito, we're gonna go ahead and add Abby and then add Bob. 
to that customer group. Next, what we really need to do is create a verified permissions policy store. So once we configure the application to reference this policy store when making authorization decisions, our users will be able to take action. So navigating to verified permissions, we'll click create policy store. And in our example, we're going to create an empty policy store. Let's go ahead and make sure that we can jump in and copy the policy store ID. And we're going to update the Lambda function for the custom authorizer that was created as a part of the application deployment. By going into configuration and updating the policy store ID, which says enter here, with our newly created Amazon Verified Permissions Policy Store ID, our authorizer will now reference the policy stored in this policy store and enforce authorization decisions based on the policies we create. As we go into create a policy, let's make sure that we're making a permit policy based on the customer role. This policy will define what anyone who has this role is able to do within our application. In this case, customers will be able to execute two different functions. They will be able to search pets and place orders within our application. Let's go ahead and give this policy a simple title based on customer role. And now, as you can see, our policy has been created. If we go back into the application and sign in as Bob, who was added to the customer role incognito and now has a corresponding permissions and verified permissions policy store, we see that he is able to take certain actions, which includes searching pets, which results in an allow because of the policy ID that matches the policy ID and verified permissions, as well as place orders, which also references the same policy ID. Let's go ahead and sign back out and go back to our policy store. So we've created this and demonstrated the simplest of all policies. All customers can search for pets and place orders. Now let's define a policy that's a little more specific or, or fine grained. You can see that one of the actions that was displayed in our app was view an order. Not unreasonably, we'd want to limit that action such that customers can only view their own orders. So let's create another policy in our policy store. The policy that we're pasting in now is a permit policy that specifically states that a principal in the customer's role is allowed to get an order under the condition that the principal is the resource owner. In this case, what we've been enabled to do is expand on the RBAC or role-based access control policy to include an ABAC or an attribute-based access control policy. Let's head back to the app and have another go. First, let's sign in as Bob. The policy that we've defined here should allow any resource owner to view orders. But hard coded into our application, Abby is the order owner for order one. When we go ahead and select view orders as Bob, we should expect to result in a deny. That's correct. The reason we're getting a deny is because again, Bob is not the resource owner. But if we sign out and sign back in as Abby, knowing that Abby is the listed owner of order one, what we should expect to see when clicking view order is an allow. And again, now we're resulting back with a tie to the policy ID of the new policy we created in verified permissions. The policies that we've looked at thus far have been either very broad, like the example of any authenticated user can add a pet, or based on attributes of a target resource. Example, users can view their specific orders. But a lot of times we want to grant permissions based on roles. It's particularly prominent in workforce oriented applications where the workforce is organized into a structured hierarchy with roles assigned based on a user's position in that hierarchy. So let's take a look at how we implement this element of authorization model in verified permissions using Cedar policy language. This example is going to illustrate the division of responsibilities between the identity provider and the permissions management system. Role assignment is best managed in the identity provider. So let's show how this works by creating a group incognito to represent the store owner and assign Eve to that role. 
So we're using the identity provider to keep track of who's assigned to which role. We've already assigned Eve to the store owner role, but that doesn't address the question of what's the store owner role permitted or entitled to do? And that's where verified permissions comes in. Within verified permissions, we're gonna write a third policy that defines what a store owner is permitted to do. So inside the verified permissions console, we've added another policy. And in the store, we're gonna paste in what a store owner role is permitted to do. In this case, they can execute the actions of get store inventory and list orders. Now that we've created this policy, let's go ahead and jump back into our application. As we sign in with Eve, the expectation is that based on that policy, we now see the ability to list all orders. As we execute that action, we do get an allow because of the corresponding policy outlined by the policy ID there in our policy store that we just created. What we do not see is any of the customer actions because while Eve is listed in the store owner group in our identity provider, she is not listed in the customers group and as such has not inherited any of those actions. Roles are a very intuitive way to think about permissions, especially in the work environment. In the simplest example, they map directly to your job function and your job is to manage the store. We will therefore assign you a role as store manager and that will permit you to do everything necessary to manage the store, including listing inventories. So why do so many customers struggle with role explosion where the number of roles in their authorization model just get so large? Well, attempting to gain fine-grained permissions through our back leads to hundreds of roles being created, if not more. This is difficult to manage and audit, let alone pass to a policy decision point or PDP for enforcement, especially if these roles need to be stuffed into a small OADC token. So why does this happen? Well, there's a few different reasons, but one of which is that we start defining roles at every level of restriction to provide fine-grained permissions. So let's expand on the example we have here. Eve wants to expand her application to be used by hundreds of pet stores around the world. With the current permissions model, any one of the store manager role can list any order for any store. Her first inclination was to create a separate role for each store, a San Jose store, a Boise store owner, a Morcabra store owner, etc., etc. But she quickly realized that this wasn't going to work. She needs a separate cognito group for every policy for each role, which would never scale. A better approach would be to constrain the store manager policy in some way that an owner can only list inventory for their store. Luckily, Eve has thought ahead and in her design, she included a custom attribute in the user profile called employee store code. By defining the employee store code attribute as London, we have set Eve's store ownership to the London store. This attribute is going to be injected into the OIDC token that Cognito generates and passes to the application. Because that attribute is in the token, it is already being passed to verified permissions as an attribute that we can reference in our policy. So the great news is that Eve doesn't even need to touch her code. All she needs to do is update her store manager policy to reference this attribute. So jumping into the policy, we're going to update the policy to include a condition where the principal employee store code must also equal the resource.store ID in order to list those orders. As we jump back into our application and sign in as Eve, we can go ahead and list orders for another store location. Let's pick Boise in this case. What we see here is that while Eve is a store owner, the policy listed in verified permissions now only grants access under the condition that the calling principle is both in the role of store owner, but also has the same attribute for employee store code, which manages access to orders from a single store location. So we get a deny for Boise and we get an allow for London, which matches that attribute on Eve's profile. And that's it. Today we introduced Amazon Verified Permissions and I showed you an example application where we leverage verified permissions for authorization decisions. Verified permissions is available today in all commercial regions, excluding those based in China. 
For detailed information, see the Amazon Verified Permissions User Guide and review the provided information on the Verified Permissions resource pages. I have linked and added QR codes to both of those here in the thank you, as well as the AWS Sample Pet Store app, as promised, so that you can run through the demo yourself. Thank you.